Cheers, Gary. Cheers. Welcome to the bar. Welcome to the um, what's currently the Three Rivers Brewery. Um, really, it's my shed, um, but things are going to get a little bit bigger than this. Um, so yeah, this is the setup that I've currently got to produce my 40 to 60 litre batches of beer. Um, I'm an all-grain brewer, which means that um, none of this kit and kilo stuff that people normally do with homebrew. I get bags of grain and develop a, a recipe and a formula for all the different grains that I use. Um, mill them all up, um, put them in my mash tun, which is this big blue esky, but now it's been used by me. It's not an esky anymore, it's my mash tun. Uh, and then go through the very traditional um, brewing process to, to get some good um, handcrafted beers out of it. So this is the recipe that, that we're brewing today. This is my Ducks Nuts Brown Ale. Uh, it hasn't actually been in competitions or anything yet, so I don't know how it's going to go, but I really like it. And it's a good sort of middle of the road beer for people who um, like something a bit heavier but don't want to go all the way with stout. Very tasty, very nutty. If you like Newcastle Brown, it's a heap better than Newcastle Brown. But it's on that kind of thing. And what I wanted to show really is that the, whatever the recipe is that I'm brewing, from a very light beer almost to a stout, um, the majority of the grain is the same, it's called a base malt. This, uh, this brew's got a, a base malt called Maris Otter. It's a Northumbrian grain coming from the northeast of England. So 82% Maris Otter. Brown malt, which is the one that gives it the nutty flavour. Caramel crystal malt, very common malt that I use in a lot of my brews. And then amber and chocolate. And the amber and the chocolate, so you, I guess you've seen the colour of that, the wort so far. It's quite dark. And that's come from, if you can see that, that little bit there, which is about you know half a centimetre thick, that's the only cho chocolate malt in there. That's, these two are what's giving it the colour, and there's you know four percent of it. And it's the same thing even if I was doing a stout. If, it's, if I do a stout, it will be pretty much all of that, and then the little bit at the top is the chocolate malts and the and the unburnt and the unroasted malts that give it the colour. So that's what we're doing today. That's the Dutch nuts brown ale. This um, stage is called sparging or laddering. Mm -hmm. So we've got, um, in this case of this recipe, we've got about nine kilos of grain in here. Mm -hmm. The milled up grain, and again, there's a whole story to how you mill it, is in there. I heat my water to a, a temperature that I calculate based on the ambient temperature, the temperature of my grain, and the temperature that I want the grain to be when it's got the liquor in it. So for this kind of recipe I'm going for about 67 degrees Celsius, which meant that this morning I had to heat that to about 79. So when the 79 goes into the cold grain, it works out to be about 67 degrees. And the, um, and the temperature of the mixed liquor and the, and the grist, the grain, um, determines the way that the enzymes that are in the grain then break down the long chain carbohydrates into simple sugars. And that's what's happened. So what happens is that, that sits in there, um, it's pretty mystic because it looks pretty kind of agricultural. It's an esky wrapped up in a sleeping bag for, for an hour. You leave it for an hour. And in that hour, the sugars are all extracted. Then I add boiling water. And the boiling water is called my strikeout water, which stops the enzymes mm -hmm. reacting. It stops the, that, that process. And then I start doing this, um, the loutering. So now this, the water, the, um, the wort, this is now wort which is um, the stickiest substance known to man, so you don't want to spill it anywhere. Mm -hmm. This is now full of all of the sugars that have been extracted and the flavours that have been extracted from the grains. And they're going into my kettle, so this is going to be boiled a little bit later. And I do batch sparging, so I sparge twice. Sometimes, some parts of the brew process look looks really tasty like you can always already eat it or drink it. And then other parts, like this one, it just looks like muddy sort of drain water and it doesn't look very nice at all. Inside the mash tun now, there's all of my ground up grain, but there's a bit of it in there that's really fine. And, and there's a, um, a steel um, braid, stainless steel braid at the bottom of this, that collects the, um, the liquor to go into here, but it's, um, it can block up really easily. That's what's called a stuck mash, and you do not want a stuck mash because it means you, it's horrible. It takes hours and hours to fix it. So what I do is I get the word running really slowly, like that kind of thing, so that the uh, the liquor and the mash in there settles really, really slowly, 
without any drawer on it, any suction pulling it down, so that all of the fines that are now in suspension get filtered out by the grain bed. It's like a natural filter, that's the way that you do it. And I found in the past, by making terrible mistakes, that if I open this straight away, the suction's too quick and it sucks all the fines through, blocks it up, that's the end, you might as well start the day again. Um, gas burners as well in the brewery. Yep. I was going to go for electric um, because it's um, a little bit more efficient yeah. um, but costs more whereas the gas is cheaper but less efficient but again going back to sort of traditional brewing which is what I like to do they traditionally are, are they're gas they're fired and um, again excuse me some of the purists will say that um, it scorches the bottom of the beer and all that kind of stuff, but I think the other side of that is it also caramelizes the bottom of the beer and makes it a little bit tastier. So I'm laying my hops out, um, and this recipe calls for three different hop additions. The earlier that you put the hops in the brew, the more bitterness you extract. And the later you put it in the brew, the more aroma you get out of it when you actually drink the beer. These are actually, these are my bittering hops. So they're not there for their aroma. They're there to, <laughs> to counteract the sweetness of the word. But they're American centennial hops. So they've really got a really nice citrusy, piney aroma. And most of the pale ales that you drink these days are um, made with these kind of hops. So these will go in as soon as I start boiling. That's why it's in my number one bucket. My number two bucket. This is they'll be my uh, flavour hops. And that'll go in right at the end, with five minutes to go in the boil, and so will the third one, which is this one here. These are my um, Roma hops, East Kent Goldings, a very traditional English hop. This isn't a very hoppy beer. The, um, all the hops are doing are stopping the beer from tasting really sweet, which it would do if you just drank it now. circulating through that but I don't want it actually in there because when it comes to getting it off into the fermenter that's going to be stuff that I really want to leave behind and you can see how maybe you can see how much they swell they get much bigger than they were when they went in there I just say that making beer is so much harder than making wine because mm -hmm. when you make wine you have a, a grape uh, and you let it ferment, but that's all of your flavour, all of your sugar is essentially in that grape. Whereas when you put a recipe together to make a beer, you've got, a, you've got hundreds of grains to choose from to work out the malt profile that you want in the beer, and then dozens of hops to choose from to work out how you're going to counteract that sweetness in the, in the beer and give you your hop, hop flavour profile. So that's, that's what they say anyway. So there you go, regardless of what your tastes are, we can guarantee you will find a craft beer that you like. See you next week.